Thank you. I'm Simon Glass, and uh, I teach at OCAD University. I teach in uh, the Faculty of Art, and I've taught here for about 20 years. It's a job I love to bits. I really, really am one of those lucky people that uh, I can honestly say um, I love the work that I do. Years ago, I went to school at what we called OCA at the time. Um, I graduated in 1983. And I studied primarily photography and, uh, and visual art. Uh, around the time I graduated, a uh, group of, uh, well, uh, faculty and students uh, started a gallery that is now called Gallery 44. And so the artist-run culture has been a big influence for me. I've exhibited my work in artist-run centers across most of the country um, and regional galleries, as well as in St. Petersburg, Russia, and in Tokyo, Japan. I also practiced freelance photography uh, for about 20 years. I still remember the day that I discovered that I enjoyed teaching better than I enjoyed doing freelance photography. And so I gradually kind of did less and less freelance work and more and more teaching. I started here at OCADU as a sessional uh, faculty member. I taught as a sessional for five years and uh, then went on to become acting chair of first year and uh, that was followed by six years of uh, being associate dean in the faculty of art. And since then, I'm, uh, I've been uh, you know, teaching, um, now full professor. Those themes are actually very important to me. When I saw the call for submissions, I found it to be um, very close to my own research interests. I had a Jewish upbringing, somewhat religious Jewish upbringing, and for that reason, I had biblical and liturgical Hebrew in front of me. <clears throat> I had biblical and liturgical Hebrew in front of me on a daily basis, and so the appearance of the language, the shapes of the letters, the alphabet um, have been important to me all along. I've also studied Hebrew mysticism. Language is very important to that mystical tradition. Um, my fine art practice has examined Jewish history in the 20th century, including the Holocaust, and those histories um, have been very important to me, and I've assimilated those lessons about history only with the greatest of difficulty, as you can likely imagine. The work itself is often original photography, also often found imagery, which I have most often combined with biblical and or liturgical Hebrew text often applied to the surface of black and white photographs with gold leaf. Um, I've employed collage in my work as well. Um, in addition to all that, I studied the philosophy of language in graduate school at the European Graduate School in the early 2000s. And so, um, you know, language, is, it's, been, it's been important to me all along. And so, as I said, when I um, saw that call for submissions to other tongues, I found it to be um, really quite, uh, quite right for me. When I saw the call for submissions, I found it to be very much in line with my own research, uh, with my own research uh, interests. The call, uh, I received the call for submissions uh, when it went out at the very beginning of September, and I started working on something pretty much immediately. I had chosen a quote um, translated from the German into English by Gershom Shalom, a German Jew who studied Jewish mysticism and wrote the history of that mysticism. And uh, Shalom emigrated to Palestine in 1923. And the quote that I chose, it, it predicts uh, catastrophe. Should the Jewish people take liturgical and biblical Hebrew for a national language. And basically that quote exposes Shalom's fear, although he was in support of doing so, it exposes Shalom's fear of the violence that may occur should that language become a secular language. And today I find it ironic that Shalom should have expressed that fear. Of course, October the 7th had a huge impact on me and on my relationship to the work that I was doing. With respect to the images, as with 
much of my work. The images are all um, the images are all found images, and they come from various sources, largely from uh, press, but also from gun lobby sites. And um, the images depict the hands of perpetrators and victims in Gaza and the West Bank since 2014. But of course, uh, since October 7th, 2023, my relationship to this piece was transformed uh, due to the full-on genocidal acts that are being committed against, uh, against Palestinians. It's very important to me, not only as a Jew, uh, but as a Canadian, for it to be understood that this is not being done in my name. So the quote in the piece is uh, from Gershom Shalom. It uh, occurs in a letter that he wrote to Franz Rosenzweig. And it's basically an apology for choosing scriptural Hebrew to turn into a secular language for the state of Israel. And it goes as follows, quote, If we transmit to our children the language that has been transmitted to us, if we the generation of transition, resuscitate the language of the ancient books so that it can reveal itself anew to them, must then not the religious violence of this language one day break out against those who speak it. And since the ongoing occupation of Palestine, I have found this quote to be tremendously ironic. The typography comes from a prayer book that survived arson at the Anshe Minsk Synagogue in Kensington Market in Toronto in the year 2002. That typography has been scanned and uh, rearranged into the quote uh, that, uh, that you see in, in my piece. Language and violence are closely related to each other. Language can be employed uh, as a weapon, as a tool of violence. And when um, an occupation has been ongoing for as long as it's been ongoing in uh, Palestine, the changing of the names of places, the changing of the names of people, the deprivation of people's languages, and in a broader sense, um, meaning uh, colonization in general, language uh, has often been taken away from people such that members of new generations find themselves um, having been forced to abandon their, um, well, their, their native languages. And as we know, language is one of the most significant carriers of culture that there can be. And so when language, uh, when a given language is usurped by another, when the names of places are changed, when, people's when people are forced or coerced to, into changing their names, um, these are acts of violence. There's a, a complicated relationship between language and justice because Given the fact that no single idiom in any language will always be understood the same way between any two readers, it generates really an impossibility of, of uh, the justice of a law. So while there cannot be justice without law, no law will ever be fully just. It's a complicated relationship between language and uh, between language and justice. Um, that being said, uh, language is something that can be used to help achieve justice when we examine our own uses of language as individuals. When we understand better our own relationship, not only to um, the language of colonization, the language of oppression but also our own language and ways of using even languages of oppression to fight that oppression. There are ways of doing that, but it requires, um, it requires, uh, it requires pause. 
and it requires thought, as with photography, which is also capable of creating a civic contract amongst all the members of a given society and the members of societies in general. It is possible with photography to see a civic contract that in order for us to um, enact that contract, it requires a slow consideration of the images that are given to us and a slow consideration of the roles being played by the people in those images, the roles being played by people behind cameras, the roles being played by editors and other disseminators of photographic imagery, and the ambiguities of photography, which are often too easily overlooked, are often manipulated by the similar, um, the similar ambiguities of language itself. So this is one of the complicated relationships between language and photographic images. I know that the irony, I believe that the irony of the, of the piece that I've created here um, has uh, created a, um, a space, I hope, for people to really pause and contemplate. A chance for me to address that irony is, is much appreciated. Thank you.